Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Right here I have a playroom and we have uh, two daughters right now and so they use this as a playroom. The wife is pregnant with the third daughter, wish me luck. Um, but so the wife's in nesting mode and she wants uh, to decorate this as a nursery. So the first step of that is this back wall we're going to make an accent wall and we'll use barn wood uh, to put up there as accent wall and then later I'll add some shelves um, both on this wall and over here to put some decoration and, and books up. It's going to be kind of a vintage theme to it but uh, for this video I'll focus on doing the, just this accent wall so give me a few seconds here let me clean up this mess and make some room for me to get to work. Okay, so this wall is about 50 square feet once I take out the, the window area. So I bought a little bit extra, you know, go about 10% extra material uh, just for cutting and, and mistakes. For this, um, I used real wood, or I'm, I'm using real wood. I went ahead and purchased this real wood, and this is barn wood that's authentic, you know, it's aged. And there's a mix of grays, browns, blondes, and then, um, you know, some darker pieces. So. You know, you could, uh, this stuff's expensive. I bought it online from uh, Facebook Marketplace. There's a seller. Uh, they're actually out of Wisconsin, I think, but they actually mailed it to me in this box. The longest pieces are about five feet in length and it was over $5 a square foot. Uh, I think it was maybe 5.20, you know, $5 and 20 cents per square foot, give or take, went uh, all finished and mailed. The, um, the cheaper option is obviously you could use um, just regular pine wood yourself and stain it and try to make it look um, more authentic. Uh, this stuff's nice because it's already cut. It's already, you know, thin, uh, you know, it's about a quarter inch or so thick and it's already all, um, all square. So uh, this is an easy way to get the real look. If you're on a cheaper budget, uh, another option, or if you don't really like messing with the actual wood, the um, the flooring actually works a lot of the flooring is rated to put on the wall and so the easiest would be like a pill and stick flooring that you could buy at any big box store and you can actually stick it directly to the wall um, you might have to do a little bit of sanding on the um, the paint to get it um, a good adhesion but I've seen people do that obviously it doesn't look um, you can never get it to look as good as uh, authentic and with this only being uh, 50 square feet I went ahead and splurged and got the real stuff but for these, I will nail them uh, to the wall where the studs are uh, with a finished nailer. So I'm just going to do a, um, a two and a half inch, um, 15 gauge um, finish nailer. And I'll start at the bottom uh, with this wall. I already have this, uh, um, you know, wings kind of down below. So I'm just going to go from here up. So I already have that as my uh, surface to start on and I'll start from the bottom and go up. So let me lay out all of the wood and make sure I have a variety of colors. I don't want all gray or all brown um, in one spot. So I'll kind of lay it out so I get a little bit of a mix of colors and then I'll mark all of my studs and then I'll start uh, laying it out. studs marked and I have um, two sizes of um, pieces here some are five inch wide boards and most of them are three inch wide boards so I'll have to uh, you know put uh, rows of different widths in there so I picked which ones I want to start with and I'm just gonna put it up and nail it I'll have to cut to length as I go across so let me just grab my uh, my nailer here and have at it
Okay, so that's the first row. Now I just have to keep going up. And obviously with this one, I already have this surface to kind of rest off of. If you're starting from the floor, what you probably want to do is mark a level line in case your floor is not level. And then start on that level line and go up to try to stay level the whole way um, up. Some people would even say you start in the middle of the wall with a level line and go up and down from it. And that way any deviation is, um, is minimized from level as you go up and down. got most of it done now I have just one last row up top and it's thinner than the three and a half inch board so that means I need to uh, rip it down on the table saw now some people will put a trim piece at the top and it's obviously to help hide that last gap when the uh, ceiling isn't quite true you know even in addition to having it not quite um, level you might have some waves in it that makes it hard to uh, get a tight fit. You'll have to scribe the wood. So mine looks fairly flat. I'm gonna find out once I cut some wood, but my plan is to do similar to what I did on all the edges and that's work to get it tight so that I don't have to put any trim. The wife didn't want any trim and I agree with that. So I'm gonna see if I can get that ceiling up there tight enough that I don't have uh, to put a trim. But if you wanted to uh, kind of cheat, you could you know just get um, some quarter round or even some crown molding and uh, and finish it off that way Alright, 
this is the last piece. So it's only 30 inches long, but you know, I measured at either end, so all the way against the corner and then up against the other piece of wood. And it's about a quarter inch difference in height. So I have to make this kind of a, a wedge shape. So to do that, uh, I took those two measurements, so two and a half inches on this side, and then two and three quarters on this side, and then we'll draw a straight line across it. So, Okay, so now that I have that line, that's my reference. And now, you know, I'm gonna freehand it. There are, um, you know, uh, jigs that you can set up so you can have a little angle here set up and go against uh, um, the fence. For me, uh, I'm just gonna go um, and follow this line carefully. Obviously, you gotta make sure you keep your fingers out of the path of the, uh, the saw. There we have it. So now we should be two and a half on this side, and then two and three quarters on this side. Let's go put it in. All right, let's see how this goes. there we have it it is all done so um, some people they will paint the wall black before they put this up and that's way if you have any cracks it's harder to see them I intentionally opted not to do that um, and they have brown walls here or tan walls so um, I figured it'd be okay I think it turned out fine you can see some spots here where that uh, the wall color does show through so that's gonna happen especially with this authentic stuff it's gonna have some holes in it and some of these boards are not um, perfectly straight or they have nail holes or whatever. So um, something to note, but overall, I'm really happy. My wife's really happy. You can see we got it all trimmed out here around the window and all these different colors. They're just naturally um, varying. You know, some of these, I think they, they do a little burn um, with a you know a torch over it, over a rough sawn piece of wood. And that gives it that kind of um, dark, uh, highlights and character and then some of them are just uh, weathered so we really like it I think it turned out well and uh, hopefully if you guys are doing something similar you get uh, the same effect stay tuned on my channel like and subscribe I'm going to be making some shelves um, with the um, metal pipe as supports with uh, 2x12s as the shelf and then also another um, more low profile shelf that uh, is going to go and put some books up on the wall so those will be coming up in future videos